Hiya! Time for another KiCad Quickie, today focused on edge cuts. It doesn't have the splash of silkscreen or the weight of the metal layers, but every PCB has an edge, and if you're hoping to pack it in a box or pair it with beefy parts, then the edge cuts layer needs a little lovin'. So, how do you get the outline right as quickly as possible so you can get back to those cool electronic bits? KiCad makes this easy, and these tips, with some notes about changes in 7, will show you how I make it snappy, and also the simple way I get from enclosure to board that's guaranteed to lock in there the first time. Let's go! Computer. Simplest case first, so I'll move quick. Are you watching closely? I could fix the edge cuts thicker than default. This used to affect copper to edge clearance, but now in 7, that's a separate constraint in design rules. No idea why it's zero by default. I'd set that to something sane like 0.2 or more. I choose a nice fat grid, say 1 or 5 millimeters, so it'll snap and make life easy. Move to edge cuts, draw a line, this button here. Used to be control, but now in KiCad 7, shift space or right click while in draw mode will restrict the lines to be HV or 45. Nice. Draw the rectangle, straight lines, and indications make this easy peasy. It's simple and arbitrary, so I could draw the whole thing freehand, but when there's math involved, I like to dupe, drop, and shift M move exact. Side note, KiCad dialogues are really cool when it comes to following engineering drawings, because those fields are quite smart. If you didn't know, look at this. Big M, I want to move this by 30, but let's say I'm following some technical drawing, so of course it's 30 in mechanical engineering speak, i.e. 50 divided by 2 plus 5. Boom. When you're basing stuff on diagrams, this comes in handy, and I use it a lot. Uh, here in footprints, pretty much everywhere. So let's admire our work. I think it looks better and is more enjoyable to handle if we add some rounded corners. Unless you want to do some annoying math, keep the same grid, or bring it down a bit to some multiple of the original, create a 90 degree arc, and then move it so it intersects two sides. After placing the arc, you can resize and snap without issue. For other corners, just dupe, rotate, place, and repeat. Done. You have a nice PCB. Hooray! Now some more interesting stuff. For any client or more serious projects, I like to have everything on a board, with the exception of ground stitching, to map to something in the schematic. That means mounting holes, fiducials, and the board outline itself. I use a generic PCB footprint symbol and associate it to the actual footprint of the board. For example, this board has that symbol and the PCB footprint is stored in a project specific library. Here the enclosure selected was a poly case box and I love these guys because they make all the data available without a stupid account login or anything like that. It's like they want you to use their products. Wow, what a concept. And the boxes are pretty good too. So look at that, a PCB template. Sweet. Unfortunately, they didn't put a ton of effort into this. Uh, the PCB template is basically the footprint of the inside of the case cover with holes in the right spots for mounting, and here we needed all the room available and to make it all the way to the edges for connectors and blinking lights. Still, everything you need is on that page because there's a 3D model. Now, there's a really easy way to go from model to PCB, and it involves another all-time favorite. It's super free CAD. This model's pretty great now because it's not just one big blob. Hide everything we don't need using the spacebar to make life much easier, operate on everything from top view, and make sure you're looking down on that enclosure, which may mean rotating the object of interest. This direction here is X, so set the axis and rotate. Cool, here we are. Now I want to slice this thing with a plane. Head to Part Workbench, create a parametric primitive. Yes, a plane, say 200 by 200. Now we want to move this thing so it intersects everything we care about. So here we've got the edges and also the mounting posts. Great. Now make sure it's a solid, select the box and the plane using control, and perform a Boolean intersection. It'll bitch about it, but it's always been fine. The important thing now is to make sure you're looking straight down, so hit top again. We need a tool from the draft workbench. Make sure to select the intersection we just made, and then modification shape 2D view. Okay, if you hide the intersection now, ah, beautiful Douglas. Select that 2D view and export it as a DXF, the Autodesk 2D one, not the other, and we're all set. Back to KiCad, you create a new footprint for this PCB and then import graphics. Not sure where the origin ends up, so use interactive placement. Choose a layer that isn't edge cut, something graphical. If you're going to want to edit this, don't use group items. Uh, in this case, it's just indicative, so I want everything grouped and make sure it's checked and OK. Place it somewhere sane and you're good to go doing edge cuts. Leave yourself a bit of clearance. You can see I went a little tight around the posts here, but left a good amount of room on the straight edges. This is to be able to put it in the box. This is injection molding, so it isn't perfectly cubical. Also, the posts get fatter as you go down. It's easy to do a sanity check here by exporting a step model of your board and bringing it into the enclosure in FreeCAD. Ain't that pretty? You can visualize how it sits and the process of getting it in there. I like to validate mounting post placements by ramming the board through them like this. Cool. I have one last nugget to share, but let me know with human words or just the button thing if you like these kind of tips or what would be interesting to cover, and I'll make more of these quickies. So that slice and dice technique is also very useful when, instead of having a box, there's a model of the PCB itself to work with. I've had some 3D folks basically take their model and go, oh, you need a technical drawing? No prob. And then they basically create a 2D view and ship you off a DXF based on that. 
seems okay, but here's the problem. When you look closely, ow oh, now, this stuff here is going to be a major pain in the butt and you'll be wasting your time deleting segments and patching it all up. When that happens, get your hands on the 3D model and use the slice with a plane technique. The problem goes away and you can just use a clean DXF. In a case like this, I import straight into edge cuts and don't leave the items grouped so I can switch the whole circles to another layer and then use proper mounting holes in the right spots, either in the footprint or on the board, because sometimes I need to sacrifice mounting holes for rootability. Sometimes it's just about bundling in a box and others it's pivotal to its purpose, but we always end up bounding boards. Either way, I hope this groovy guide helps make your time on the edges enjoyable. Cheers. <laughs>